What's going on, world? Jack of all space, CLT. Back like the phoenix coming out the ashes. I am the beloved one, DJ Spellman. To my left, we have the pride of Africa, Ken Wabibi. Yes, the one and only pride of Africa, Wabibi. Shout out Malawi. Shout out Malawi. Big up, big up all the African nations in it. To my right, Puerto Rican Poppy, Banks sure. on the Beat. Is there a touchdown, uh, Blue Water Banks, Banks on the Beat, all that? Bad boy tires. You know what? I don't ever ask y'all how y'all cars doing, bro. I mean, we good, man, because you know if we ever have any of, issues, of we're going to 3700 Wilkinson Boulevard. I, I, I would assume so, <laughs> but you know, I got to make sure y'all good before anything. Yeah, You yeah. look like you wanted to say something <laughs> for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you nah, hear cool. If you hear a noise, you tell me, bro. I'll let you know. <laughs> all right. For all your auto care needs, sure. you know what it is. And today, I mean, every time we bring somebody on, it's a special guest. But for me, this is even more personal. This is... A, one of my brothers, you know, part de Mexico, part de Uruguay, Ooh. Marcelo, mm, what's Antonio, Banya, what's, oh, what's good, God. sir? What's happening, dog? What's happening, man? man? <laughs> Look, so I mean, listeners, me and this guy go go back. We go way back, I should say. Bullshitting in classes, just a lot of a lot of games, man. You know, before the responsibilities, and we kind of lost touch. Um, you know, he's, he's went through some things, and we're going to get to all that, but uh, big up the homie Casey, because that's how we kind of reconnected. He seen me getting my eyebrows done in that, and he's like, is that, you, you know somebody knows me if they call me Dave. Like, that's old school, because not a lot of people, you know, call me Dave or David. Right. So this is one of my brothers, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm delighted to have him here and talk about his story, man, so... Big up to you already. Hey man, it's a pleasure. I'm excited to be here. I got my first tattoo with this man. <laughs> first tattoo in, a, in, a, in somebody crib. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Rinda. Yeah. yeah, man. Ooh. Yeah, man. Okay. Yes, yeah, everybody throw back. Throw back. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> mm. Man, we appreciate you coming through, man. You know, and telling coming to tell your story and share that with us, man. Um, you know, we start off every podcast by giving our guests their flowers, and I'm gonna start yours off. Uh Certified kidney and wellness coach from Yale University and the Kidney Fund. American Kidney Fund, yes, sir. American Kidney so, Fund, okay. Musician. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, dialysis warrior. Mm-hmm. Podcaster. 21 years of that. My bad, my bad. Uh, 21 gotta, years of that. People got to hear that. 21 years of dialysis. Mm. 21 years. Podcaster. Purveyors of health and the connected. Entrepreneur with Purium. And look, big up, Purium. You know, we got on deck. Product, product placement in it. You bought <laughs> plenty for us today, right? <laughs> <laughs> Co-founder and CEO of Beat Finders. Man, you care to go in on any of these? Yeah, on everything. Talk to us. Let, let, tell, me, tell me where you want me to start. <laughs> I will shoot. We'll, 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 we'll kind of guide you then. So, you know, big up to you on one front, you know, one of your missions is to help the lower and middle class develop consumer unions to shrink the increase in wealth gap around the world. So very necessary, especially with the new change in office. So big up number 46, man. All right. But, you know, let's really get into it. Another another one of your missions is living a holistic lifestyle. But, you know, let's talk about why that's important to you. You had your first hemodialysis treatment December 5th, 2002. In stage <laughs> renal disease, yeah. FSGS, yeah. you've had over 10 major surgeries and procedures. You've almost died a couple times, a few Shit. times because of that. Many times, man. man. So really just take us through the mindset of experiencing all that. Man, let's go ahead, man. Let's you you it. on now. Yeah, let's get it, man. Honestly, mm-hmm. okay. So where this all started, it, it started on my birthday, on March 21st, 1997. I was diagnosed with... Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, and that's the FSGS. That's the one of the most aggressive forms of that disease. And I kind of thought it was cool when I was young because that's the same disease Alonzo Mourning had mm. with the kidney. He had a kidney transplant, right? So I was more aware of it back then. But man, I didn't I didn't know what was going to happen. Man, I was just a baby. I was just a baby when all that happened. And the way the the Western medical system is and the way it functions, you know, you just follow the book. They 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 follow the book of okay, we're gonna give you medication to try to slow down the process of the kidneys just failing, and hopefully that works. But it never does. It never does. So well, how old were you at this time? I was ten years old when I got diagnosed. Okay. And I was thirteen when, like, they were they told me, you know, 
this is this is enough. Your kidneys are are like at two percent. Wow. You need to you need to go on dialysis or have a kidney transplant. That oh, was that was for my real. fork in the road. Yeah, that was my fork in the road. So, man, I, like I said, I didn't know nothing. My mama, she's an immigrant. I'm a first you know generation born American. So we just follow. We follow what the doctor said because the way we get conditioned in this life is that the doctors are the authority. They're almost like God to us. You know, you just listen to everything that they say. So they gave me this dream about just take your medications. Everything's going to be good. You're going to do the transplant. You don't have to worry about dialysis. And so we went through with that. You know, we went through with that. My mother, she was the first one to jump in. And I remember I was on the news. <laughs> I was on the news. I threw the first baseball pitch at the at the night stadium because we were trying to raise money. We didn't have no money for the transplant. Mm -hmm. So my mother, you know, she's a, she's a blessing. She gave me life twice. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so that happened. Duke University, 2000, August 30th, 2000. I remember saying goodbye to her, We're going into the operating room, and I just wake up. Man. I wake up with tubes everywhere in my in my neck, in my groin, you know what I'm saying, just keeping me alive and just getting pumped full of all these medications, you know what I'm saying? And I was there for about five, six days, and when I first went to the mirror, it's like I didn't even recognize myself. Because of the medication that they give you, the prednisone, the steroids, I was all bloated. DJ probably remember me. Like I just, it, it was like overnight. So that just that just messed me up, and I went down into a deep, deep depression. And the sad thing is, it was supposed to be a great future for however long, twenty years, however long the kidney was supposed to last. In about maybe like two months, three months, doctors came in and they said we got a problem. Your kidney is not working. There's a reoccurrence. The old disease is going into your mother's kidney, and it's it's just fucking it up. It's destroying it. Mm. We there's nothing we can do. Oh, well, hold on a second. So, you had the transplant. Yes, sir. Your mom gave you the kidney, mm -hmm. and then the disease reoccurred again yeah. with the new kidney. In my mama's kidney, and mom they never kidney. said that. They never said anything about reoccurrence. It was always about. Make sure you take your medications because of the rejection. It's going to reject. They never said this was possible. So that's what happened. And I was like, I'm not about to go through another kidney transplant. That shit wasn't easy. You know what I'm saying? I had, I had a thing coming out of my dick. You know what I'm saying? A tube catheter. I, I, mean, I was just a baby. I was supposed to be going to high school, playing play football with DJ. You know, I'm over here fighting for my life. So they put me on dialysis. And... When I first started dialysis, it was I had peritoneal, so that was a tube coming out my stomach, and then that was just that was just the start. That was the start of a just a slippery slope, man. And just to give you a quick rundown of how my life was on dialysis when I was in school with DJ, I would literally have to do treatment for twelve hours a day. I would get connected, go to school, and as soon as I get done with school, I have to run back home to get the machine ready to reconnect myself. So that was in life, you know what I'm saying? I was always getting sick. I never went to school. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Just like, fuck, I don't know how to go to school. Um, so I dropped out, man. I dropped out of school after a few years because it was just too rough. My grades were just going low. But I did get my GED, so shout out CBCC. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, big up. Yeah. Big up, CP. Yeah, yeah. So I did my thing. But, um, yeah, man, in, in the middle of all that, bro, like, mm, so much happened, man. So much happened. But I try to live my life, you know, normal. Because I, I I did find, when I was about 16, 17, the dialysis, I found a little bit of a routine. So it wasn't too chaotic. Even though it was crazy, you, you the human body and the human mind finds a way to adapt. So I adapted, you know. So I, I, I reunited with some friends, some, some old knuckleheads that you know, we don't even really talk anymore. But that's just what it was. We grew up with each other then. You know, girls started getting involved, and then just me being young and ignorant and dumb, drugs started getting involved. And, and me, because I had so much uh, medical problems, I was the pill man. <laughs> Excuse me, Lord, I'm sorry. But I, I, <laughs> I, had, I always had the pills, you know what I'm saying? So I was running the street with my pills, but, yeah, man, I know you got questions, so ask me questions because I, I can keep going, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah. So you, you mentioned the part about the, having all the wires hooked up to you and – Tubes and stuff hooked up to you. There's a video of you actually doing pull-ups. I got to big you up on that, you know, doing pull-ups with the tubes on you. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you said as, as well that um, there was a process where you was, you know, going through depression and you was, a, you know, did the pain pillars, pain killers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
Did that lead to other drug use? And was that the lowest part of your life? Oh, I like that question. I like that question. Let's go to hell. Let's go to oh, hell. Shit. Let's go. Um, Race yourself. On a Sunday. <laughs> so when I was young, well, there's levels of hell. That's right. Many levels of hell. And I experienced many of them. So when I was about 19, 18, 19, 20, 21, I met a girl, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it, it was the first girl that I felt like I said I love you too. And, and just the whole situation <laughs> got crazy. It just started to go bad, you know, as far as what I thought it was. But we were both young. Everybody was young, you know, and everybody was hurt. So me being on my Klonopin and Xanax and painkillers, Percocet and all that stuff, I, I was doing my thing, and she was always with me. So, like, there was times I went to dialysis. I would go at 6 in the morning, and she would be in the, in, in the car waiting for me. And it would be snowing outside, you know what I'm saying? So I know we had love for each other, but things started to go wrong, you know what I'm saying? And that, you know, gotta watch, you got to read the book for that <laughs> and mm-hmm. watch the documentary for that shit. But when I mean things got bad at one point in time, because I, I, I did get into some drug use, you know what I'm saying? Me being retarded and, I mean, excuse my language, but I was dealing with some cocaine. I sold pills. Um, and I mean, I just, I was lost, man. Like, I feel ashamed a little bit, but now I just, I understand where I was at and I understand where I'm at now, but I don't really beat myself up too much because I'm out of that, I'm out of that mind state so, but it went it went very very bad because in the middle of all that, when I was with her, I had my parathyroid removed. So mm-hmm. this surgery because of dialysis is is, is 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 very bad. So what that happened with that was the parathyroid started to overreact. If you're on dialysis for a certain period of time, it's just not good. It's just not good for the body and the heart. They say I remember the doctor comes in. He's like Marcelo, we got a um your blood work came back. And it's not showing up good. We got to you know, do surgery and take that out. And I'm looking at him like, man, I just had surgery. I just did something the other day, like <laughs> a right. few months ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I, I don't give I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. And I, I remember I asked him, I looked at the doctor and I said, is it painful to die this way? Like, because he said you could die. <laughs> and I remember he laughed. And he was like, yes, it's very painful. Let me tell you what's going to happen. So if we don't do this surgery, it's going to start to, the parathyroid is going to overreact and it's just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. Slowly start to eat away the bones. It's going to start eating the bones. And then after it's done with the bones, it's going to go to the muscle. And then when it's done with the muscle, you're just going to be in pain all this time, withering away. It's going to go to the brain. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> that do sound painful. Right. That sound painful as hell. So I just looked at him and I'm like, oh, I got to tell my mama now. So I told my mama, she was just like, what? Like, get by so get the get the <laughs> you know, just going hard. And I didn't think nothing of it, man. I'm I'm already a soldier at like 19, 20 years old. I'm already like, I've been through so much that it's just like another surgery. At least I get my anesthesia and my pain meds. So I, I get I be in la 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 land for a minute. Don't really care because that's what I look forward to, you know, for, for a minute. <sighs> I remember I, I go through surgery. I wake up, man, I'm in so much fucking pain. I'm in the ICU, and it just it's just crazy. It's crazy. Everything's dark, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, even to this day, my voice is a little bit messed up because of that. And a day goes by, two, day go, two days go by, and I'm, I'm in recovery. And then I start to feel like my neck, it's, it feels tight. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's going on? Breathing, just relaxing, trying to relax. I remember, beep, I called a nurse. Excuse me, can you can you come in, please? I, I need to I need to speak to you. Something, something's not right. All right, Mr. Penny, hold on one second. How can I help you? Something's wrong with my neck. Can you you know please call the doctor? I don't I don't feel right. Some something, something's wrong. No no no, it's okay, Mr. Penny. Just relax. You know this is supposed to happen. Just just sit back, relax. We'll be all right. Okay, all right, cool. I'll listen to you. Boom. About an hour later, boop. Please please call the doctor. Something's not right. I I, I my neck. It's like it's affecting my breathing. Please, Mr. Penny. We told you that's part of the recovery. Just relax. You just got to relax. You're recovering. All right. Okay. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. About 30 minutes past. I'm like, look, call the doctor right now. Something's wrong. Mr. Pena, what do you want? I said, bitch, call the fucking doctor, man. Something's not right. 
I can see my neck. I, I can't even breathe now. And I'm sitting up. Like, what are you talking about? Call the doctor. And once you call the doctor and he says that everything's okay, when he sees me face to face, then I'll shut the fuck up. I'll stop. Oh, oh okay. She didn't know what to say. So whatever. Doctor, he didn't want to come. So they ordered me to get an a, a emergency CAT scan, like 3, 4 in the morning. I go down to the CAT scan room. I can't even lay down because now my neck. I can see my neck, bro. I can see my neck. And I couldn't lay down because it was closing my, my airway. Excuse me. <sighs> so they finally somebody said, just lay on your stomach. Lay on your stomach. Can you do it like that? I'm like doing a plank. And I'm like, yeah, I can breathe a little bit. It's still, you know, it's enough. Just hurry up and do it. So as soon as they fucking, they, they put me through that little donut. <laughs> boom. They say, oh, stat. Like he, he's, infu- like it's bleeding. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Infiltrate. I don't remember. But the, the, the blood was just leaking out. And it, it was not closed. The suture was open inside of me. So I'm dying. I'm literally dying with blood just cu- uh, closing my airway. And then I just see like five nurses come. You know what I'm saying? They put they they give me a whole bunch of shots to put me to sleep. But I'm not a, I'm not asleep. They put this damn breathing tube down my throat, all the way into my diaphragm. This feeding tube up my nose. I'm about to fuck everything. Up. And mm, I just remember that shit. I'm looking at everybody like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Foom, foom, foom. And then foom, it's silence. Is everything silent? I could have died. I could have died if all I know, you know. But the the next thing I remember when I became conscious, I was in the ICU. And the room was just orange. And I could hear this machine. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm looking and I could feel like I'm not breathing for myself. The machine is breathing for me. I touch the machine. I'm looking at that shit. And I'm like, oh, my God. And then th- there's a feeding tube in me. And I've been like that for like two, three days. You know what I'm saying? I just remember that, man. I could see the, silhou- the silhouettes of the doctors just talking about me. And, I'm, and I even drew this, man. I should have drained that. I should have bring that drawing. But I was in there for like three, four days. They're feeding me. They're taking care of me. Every time I needed something or I was in pain, I would have to write what I wanted. And... It was crazy because my mama still has those letters. So you would see my letter being like, and I remember I would be like, don't tell tell, tell my ex, tell that bitch I don't want to. You could actually see it just going like that. Or like, I'm in pain, I want to. It just go like that. And I, man, that shit, that shit was rough, man. And I remember when the nurse came to take that out of me, she's like, I ain't going to lie to you. It's going to be painful. But, you know, you don't want that. You don't want to keep that in you forever. You want to be able to breathe. And she's like, all right, we're going to do it in three, two, one, she grabs two hands and goes like this. And I'm like, fuck you. That's the first thing I said. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. And she's like, it's okay. You know what I mean? That's not the first time that's happened. But that's not it. You know, this one's going to hurt too. Hmm. So, yeah, man, that was that was deep. That that hell was a level of hell. But, you know what I mean? It got, it got worse because I stopped talking to that girl because she was around during all that time. And... Then I just went into my bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Because it, 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 as far as trying to make money, you know what I'm saying? Doing something that we all think is cool, being a dope boy. and I mean, because I was doing that. I was go to strip clubs, make money. So she became a stripper. So that's, you know, now we came in, con- we came in contact with each other because I had... I'm gonna get arrested, man. I'm <laughs> Wait, about, statute, about, statute of limitations. I'm about all this stuff I've done. <laughs> <laughs> statute of oh, limitations. Shit. I think that's all, all part of the trauma of it. Hey, man. It, 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 it is. is. You know what? My angels got my back, so fuck it. So, anyways, man. So she she hits me up. She's working at over there on the east side at crazy you know, whatever. She's working over there <laughs> at that place. I never liked that place. Got I had a homeboy that died over there. They got murdered. So, anyways, man, I never liked that parking lot. Mm. I met I met up with her. And I was I always told her, like, it's just about business, man. Just get whatever it is that you want. And that's it. But slowly, man, slowly. Cause I, I that was the first girl I said, I love you, man. Like I had love for that girl. And then to see her turn into this, it was just like, fuck. Like, you breaking my heart. Like, why am I doing this? So and the sex was good, man. To be honest with you, the sex was good. <laughs> like we it was we both had good sex. Um, but so point of me saying all that. There was things that were unresolved between me and her, and I just wanted to know the truth. I didn't. I, I I've always said I don't care if Jesus Christ told me that you did this. I want to hear from your mouth, and she did. She told me, 
But when 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 we were talking about that, it was just a bad situation. I was on powder, I was on clonopin, I was on all this stuff smoking. I had to go di- to dialysis at that time. It was at five in the morning. We're doing all this, me and her. And dialysis is calling me, Marcella, where you at? You supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Da, 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 da. You, you need to stop doing this. <laughs> and then I'm just like, man, I just had this surgery that almost killed me. Two weeks after I had this that almost killed me, this kidney that I had, mm-hmm. they left it inside of me. So two weeks after this, this almost killed me. In the same year, in the same year, they even told my mama, you, he's not going to survive this. You got to get his, uh, his uh, funeral and all that shit um, handled because he's not going to make it, but I did. So that all that happened, and then this happened with this girl, and I'm just like, dialysis, cheating, everybody stabbed me in the back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What the, man, fuck this. What the fuck is the point? Like, I'm, I'm barely li- alive. No one really, no one is real. I feel like I'm the only real one, and everybody's just bitch. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Everybody turned. So and I said, you know what? I said, you know what? All right, bitch, you want to do this? I'm, I'm going to show you. I go into the fucking bathroom. I grab my knife. And I'm about to, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to slice my knife. I'm just going to slice my arm. For the ones that don't know, I got a, a fish love here. That's where I do dialysis now. Mm. That's a big-ass vein that has blood just pumping through it. Let me see your hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. I feel that. So the blood's going through that vein. It's pumping through. That See that? So and that's how you do you do your dialysis. Yeah, I stick myself with some needles, big ass needles. I should bring some needles. Oh man. So yeah, I I was like, okay, you want to feel pain? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this in front of you because I was in the bathroom. I was just gonna lay. I was laying down. I was sitting on the toilet like this, thinking of everything, thinking of everything with the knife like this, just barely scratching like this. Just like do it, just do it. And someone's telling me, don't do it, don't do it, don't fucking do it because once you do it, you can't stop. You're not going to be able to stop. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm, t- I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm crying. I'm tired. And then when I was about to, like, really do like that, ring, the phone rings, bro. The phone rings. And when I answer the phone, man, hold on, man. Oh. When I answer the phone, it's my nephew, man. It was my nephew, man. He's six years old, seven years old. And he's on his way to, he's on his way to school. Like, what's up, Tito? I'm like, what's up, man? What's up, baby boy? What's going on, man? Like, what you doing? I'm like, oh, nothing, man. <laughs> ain't doing nothing. I'm just chilling, man. What's up? Oh, no, no, I'm on my way to school. You all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. All right. And then, and then all right, see you later. And I'm like, right, boom. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. And I just I just left. I just mushed her out the fucking way, and I just left. I almost got into a few car crashes in my. I had at that point in time, I had a 1986 uh, Caprice ca- Classic, a box Chevy, mm. and I'm. Motiv- I just almost hit a whole bunch of people, but I didn't care. I didn't care. My heart was broken, and I was still hurt, but I didn't want to do it like that. So I had a whole bunch of pain pills, hardcore pain pills. Opana for the ones that don't know, that's that's some serious shit. I took everything, Klonopin, everything I had, more than probably like 30 pills. I went in the bathroom and I just had a picture of my nephew. And the good thing is that my parents were home. They knocked the door down, and then I just remember I'm in the hospital, and I get sent to the mental ward. You know, they they treat me though. <laughs> they treat me, and I went to the mental ward for like 10 days, just talking. And, you know, you're not supposed to do that. You can't do that, type of stuff. So I learned that. I learned, you know, you need to calm down. Um, but that that was that was a dark, very 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 dark spot, man. Very dark place that I that I visited and. But I'll tell you this, the great thing about darkness is that when you in that darkness and someone opens like a crack, like a door, see that light. would see that light. See that light. And they would see that shit. So I, my thing was, all right, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got family in Houston. Let me go to Houston. And then boom, the, the psychiatrists are like, we're going to let you out earlier, but you, you have to promise us you're going to go to Houston. So I'm like, all right, I'm leaving. As soon as you let me out, I'm gone. And that's what it was. I'm gone. And. Hey, so that leads me to my next question, though, because you're really big on self knowledge. So, how does self knowledge help you get to your recovery? I mean, self knowledge and, and knowledge of self is everything. Because if you if you don't have love for yourself, one and and just educate yourself on what it is that you are, you lost in this life, man. Yeah. You lost in this. You know, religion is cool. 
but they only they only scratch the surface. You know what I mean? It's it's a you got to incorporate everything: diet, breath work, um, just everything, meditation, and, and and really loving yourself. Because when you love yourself, you're not gonna do drugs. You're not gonna smoke because you love yourself. You know right. what I'm saying? And and now, dude, there's been times where I I'm driving like late night and. I really think about it like, oh, I hug myself. I'm like, I got you, baby boy. I'm got you. Like, you're not, you're not gonna go back to that. And I'm sorry that I did that to myself because I was tearing myself up, man. I really was, man. So, yeah, self knowledge is huge. It really is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It's good to hear that you're in a better place now to come from there. Like you said, levels of hell. Yeah, you like you, took we, we went to the depths with you right Yo, there. So, for real, man. You know, uh, shout out to you for making it through that, man, and being here to tell this story, man, and be able to inspire other people. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You know, to fast forward, you're basically like a superhero to come from, <laughs> from down under and, and be where you're at now. Um, can you tell us about Perium and the Holistic Justice League and how they had an impact on your life? Absolutely, man. So before I get into that, the the, the Houston part, it, it, that happened first. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And Imperium and all that stuff came came after. So when I was in Houston, and just to show you how God works, man. So I... My thing was about music. I love music. Everything was music. My dad, you know, he, he did his thing. He actually has two 45-inch records because that's what he did for a living when he was when we were in our Chicago days. So anyways, I had a friend that came to live with me here in, 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 in Houston at that time. He came from Charlotte, and he knew people that me and DJ know. You know, well, Shout out to my boy DJ Salute, Luis Alcampo. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that's my brother. So we met through him, you know, and I really don't talk to that other dude, but it, it, he was a, a, a very um, important piece in the puzzle because when I met DJ Salute, he was doing his thing as far as DJing, and we were all just just babies in the game. And be, and then I met my other brother, Archer Rose, you know, a.k.a. J. Roy, the author. So as soon as we all met, we, like, connected. Like, it was it was chemistry, boom. We were working at uh, Media Tech Institutes because they're, you know, audio engineers, and, you know, they, they do that. You know, they were really doing that big back then, so... We all started working with each other, and we we created this company called Beat Finders. Me and my brother, that was his brainchild, Archer Rose. Beat Finders TV, and it was beatfinders.net. I don't think that website works anymore, <laughs> but that's what it was. So that, if y'all look that up, you'll go to YouTube, um, go to Beat Finders TV, uh, Instagram, and you'll see. We worked with so many people. I'm not going to name drop, but. I, I'll do it for you. Fun B, Lil Kiki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, yeah. you know, you feel free to get into that. Scarface, yeah, Scarface, uh -huh. yeah. We was on everything, man. We, it was just crazy, man. Because when you could provide value to, it doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. Provide value to the artist or to the entrepreneur, whatever, and they're gonna see you, you know, and they'll they'll work with you. So I grew up listening to SPM and. You, know, you gotta break wall. it down for everybody don't know nah, what SPM nah, is. South Park, Mexico. Man, you know throw back. Shout throw out to, back. Shout out to the man. And you know, that's a whole little situation in itself. But that I mean, just a whole bunch of I was on stage with Manny Fresh, man. I'm gonna, I'll mm. drop that. I'll drop that <laughs> name. <laughs> little, I, little I was slight, a hot boy back in the humble day. Brag, <laughs> humble yeah, brag. Yeah. So you know what I mean? And and we just we just really put a footprint, like our name became solidified in the history of Houston. You know, to this day, people know what B-Finders is and, and what we were doing with that, you know. And not, not to go too deep into that, because that's a whole other podcast in itself. Um, but the reason why that kind of started to, to uh, dwindle or fall, fall out or whatever was because me, I, in my mind and in my heart and in my soul, in the essence of everything, I was like, all right, you can do this for now. And once it starts, like, getting picked up and, and going... You need to you need to focus on your health, Marcelo, because you know you, you no one understands what you're going through. No one understands really. They 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 can understand a little bit, but not 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 fully. So I had to work on finding uh, a place where I could train. I I felt like I needed the right environment, the right food, fasting, meditation, and all this stuff combined, and I can heal myself. I, I can really repair the kidneys because. As it stands, I have a life sentence on dialysis. And I don't accept that. I just don't. You know what I mean? The spirit is too strong, bro. The spirit is way too strong. So I don't believe that. And then that's when I went to Hawaii. You know what I mean? That was a whole other thing. I did eight days of a water fast in Hawaii. Just water with crystals. That's, how I, that's where I got these crystals from right here, mm -hmm. from Hawaii. 
Shout out to Dr. Kassar. He shout out. Yeah, he 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 really, you know what I'm saying, just elevated my mind and it took me to a whole nother level. And because of that, I was actually gonna move to Hawaii and work with him because he was he really was impressed with my editing work with B Finders and all the stuff that I was doing. So all that worked in my favor and then boom, now I'm back in Charlotte. And things go to hell again now. Cause Perium's coming up. Now things go to hell again because I, go, I was a little depressed because the Hawaii thing fell through. I gave everything up in, in, with B Finders, you know, everything. I moved from Houston to go to Hawaii, and I came back to Charlotte. And all the stuff that happened in Charlotte was just like, all right, well, I'm here, man. I, whatever, just make the best of it. I, I, you know, I slowly fell back into my bullshit, a little bit of pills, a little bit of this, this, and that, because I'm by myself. When you by yourself, you know, we're creatures that 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 need that connection with other like-minded individuals. Right. If not, you start, I don't know, man, you start doing other stuff. So I did that, man. I started to get back into drugs. I started getting into my pills. And it, it wasn't even me going into the streets. It was, excuse me, doctor, can I get some pain medicine? Oh, here, yeah, sure. Boom, boom, boom. They give me whatever. Oxycodone, oxycodone, it doesn't matter what it is. I would, I would pop it. So because of that, and being getting sick because when you do these drugs, your immune system gets knocked down. You become weak. So I got sick. I got infections in my gut, in my stomach. So boom, protocol. Like vancomycin, that's that's a very, very hardcore uh, antibiotic, which I'm allergic to, but I had to get it through the mouth. So all these different antibiotics, like you know what I'm saying, hardcore antibiotics, five different blood pressure medications, three different benzodiazepines. Endless amount of Dilaudid, endless amount of Frenigan. That's synthetic heroin. You know what I'm saying? So this day, this arm is destroyed because all my veins from heroin use, not my like street use, but hospital stuff. But mm -hmm. so all that happened and my gut became so inflamed and so bad for years, for like three, four years, that last year in 2019, on my mama's birthday, the first time I've been to the beach, Myrtle Beach, in, in like, I don't know, man, like five, six, seven, eight years, like I felt just something in my stomach. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what, what is this? In the middle of the night, and then, boom, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. And I was trying, I'm trying not to panic, but I know my, I, I've been able to, to save myself so many times because of the intuition, like, oh, something's wrong. You got to go to the hospital now, mm -hmm. you know? And many, many times, if you didn't find this, you know, you would have died or whatever. So, it got worse. I tried to go to the bathroom, ain't nothing coming out, but that's how I felt like I had to, you know, go to the bathroom. I tell my mom I gotta go to the hospital. Then now it's like, oh shit, like this is very painful. I'm throwing up. I'm trying to go to the bathroom. I'm screaming. I'm cussing and screaming. Go get rushed to the emergency room, and they're like, oh shit, you your intestines just perforated. They just blew up inside of you. My intestines blew up inside of me with shit all inside of the body. If people don't, <laughs> people got to understand how dangerous that is. So now I'm screaming. I'm, I'm, I'm like yelling in pain. They're, they're like, we need to do emergency surgery because, you know, you're, you're, you're dying. Like you're dying. The doctor's even looking at me like, I'm sorry, this is happening to you. Getting stuck with IVs. Boom, boom, boom. Sticking me with IVs. But I'm so dehydrated. And the body shuts down when it's when it's going through trauma. It's like the veins have a mind of their own. And they, like, they contract. They get scared. Right. So there's no vein getting in. And they sticking me everywhere. Like, everywhere. Bruh, I, I swear to God, I'm not even exaggerating. 22 IVs later, they, like, oh, shoot, we, we can't do anything. I'm in the IV room. I mean, the, the OR room. The nurse is looking at me like, just pay, pay attention to me. Look me in my eyes. It's okay. It's going to be over soon. It's going to be all right. I'm like, what you mean? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Just stop. Just stop. Like, we need to do this. No, we need to do this. People holding me down. And it's like at least 10 nurses. The damn, I could feel the doctor touching my, my groin area to try to get the vein in. I mean, get the IV in the vein. And finally, they get one in the foot. Like, in the, my toe, I think it was. And they put the mask on me. The nurse is like, it's going to be over. It's going to be over soon. And then, boom, I'm asleep again. It's all quiet. It's like sometimes you wish you would have died. Because even though it's peaceful now and you don't feel the pain, it's not over. It's just dark. It's just dark. And you're going to wake up. 
you gonna wake up and it's gonna be even worse than it was when you, you know what I'm saying it happened. And that's exactly what happened. It was worse. I had like I had these staples all like this. And they had to put an ostomy bag for three months. And that's what I was fighting for because I didn't want to have no ostomy bag. That's basically having a diaper hanging from your stomach. And my intestines were literally hanging out of my stomach. And I would have to just use the bathroom like that. And my heart goes out to people that, that have to go through that. I respect you with all my heart because I had to learn how to live life like that for a little bit. Um, but I say that to say this. Even though all that happened, the spirit, my spirit was like, it's all right, you're going to recover. You're going to recover. Just continue to do the breath work. Continue to continue with the mission, Marcelo. Continue with the mission. You got to help people. Everybody's out there hurting. Everybody's anxious and depressed and sad. You are the light. Show them. Because somebody helped me, so now I got to help them. And when I said that, I was like, all right, God, I said this out loud. Because I felt like I was forsaken, man. So much has happened. And literally, I was like, God. It was like, it was like Jesus on the cross. Like, God, you forsaken your son? Are you forsaken me? Like, you know, literally, it's like, boom. And... When I said that, I'm like, don't think like that. Don't think like that. It's too easy to think like that. Okay? How can I help people? All right, I'll make the smoothies because I train I, as much as I can. I make my little smoothies with spirulina, chlorella, and all this stuff. And I, and I knew a lot about diet. That's why, because of the, the stuff I've been learning on my own. No one told me this. I had to learn on my own from other people. And then one day, because I follow a lot of people that I find interesting, you know what I'm saying? If you're interesting, I'm going to follow you and watch you. So, boom, this one guy named Bitman Buddha, he puts a message on, on, on Instagram talking about, we're looking for driven people that want to work, that, you know, that, that really want to do good in life, whatever, whatever. I'm like, I literally, I literally out loud said, how can I make money doing this, God? And then I saw that message, and I'm like, all right, fuck it, let me see. I message him. Oh, yeah, I'm in, he's in India, but he's going to come back and we'll talk. All right, cool. So we're talking when he comes back. I still didn't know nothing about the company, but I knew that the ingredients, you know what I'm saying? Read the ingredients for me, man. They, they, on that bottle, the ingredients are all organic, all kosher, no glyphosate, all the stuff that you would want. Break as that far down, as, though, Marcelo. You said no uh, glyphosate. So glyphosate, okay. Glyphosate, if you eat food like McDonald's, uh, processed food and cereals, things that's non-GMO or that has genetically modified stuff, then you have what is called glyphosate or heavy metals, you know, because of the world that we live in. It, it's stuck. It's lodged in the gut. So it's like this goo that's preventing anybody from absorbing any nutrients into the, into the, into the body because that's what happens in the, in the intestines when you eat the food, right? So the glyphosate is just preventing that. You can eat superfoods and all this stuff, organic. But if you got the glyphosate, which everybody does, then you're just not getting it. And things start to happen like colitis or inflammation of the gut, fibromyalgia, leaky gut syndrome, high blood pressure, the list goes on. You know what I mean? When you, when you mess up the gut. So when I started to learn about that, and I already knew about that, that you, there's no other way to get glyphosate and heavy metals and, and, and this stuff out of your system. Once you have it in there, it's there. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I started to, to learn about this company and this product called Biomedic, which I have some right here, that is, from what I know, the only thing on the market proven with, with clinical trials and study and data to, to remove about 74, 75% of glyphosate. So boom, you take that, you do that, and then when you drink this stuff, that's when you get in all that living enzymes and all the light energy from source. Because the con that's what I always say, man, to people. I've never been so spiritual in my life, but I've always been, I've always had that spirit in me. But when I started to eat, I call it high frequency nutrient dense foods. Okay, because you're a living being. Everybody's a living being that that emits electricity. Electricity's flowing through you. So if you eat dead food, like a standard American diet, then that's why you feel dead. You feel low. You don't feel high. You don't feel energetic. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this all the time. I feel like a little kid because of this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when I 
tried the products and I invested in myself, it's like ten dollars and fifty cents a day. You know what I mean for thirty days. Boom. It's called the ultimate lifestyle transformation, and that's what it does, guaranteed. If and if you think it doesn't, it's a sixty uh, day money gap back guarantee. So, I was just blessed to find this company, and not just the products and the food, because when I when I be, when I came in, when I became involved with them, the holistic justice league was the 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 team that I got parted up with just through the grace of just everything. You know what I'm saying? Because Purium is an, it's like the umbrella. You know, and there's different squads. I'm part of the Holistic Justice League. You have another one called Awakening Champions. You know, I think there's a dude here in Charlotte from Awakening Champions, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, yeah, so that that's network marketing done right because that's what I am, you know. And that's, that's the only company that or only business that I could do whatever it is that I want to. Literally, I make money from my phone. Like right now, y'all want to make some money? <laughs> we can make some money off the phone, man. So, yeah, bro, it's, it, it's a blessing. Everything is a blessing, and I'm and I'm grateful that things happen the way that they happen. And I'll say this, and then on this, that's why I have the authority, man, and the conviction to stay, say, and 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 stand up the way that I'm standing up and saying this, because no one, no one can tell me shit, man. This is a feeling. It's not a blind belief. It's the feeling. Me entiendes? Yeah, tu sabes, man. Yeah. So yeah, get the feeling. We keep it on that tip though, man. So your Instagram is definitely a place where people need to go for this kind of inspiration daily. A good laugh, you know. Shout out to your vocals, man. My boy be singing all the time on it. And then once again, knowledge, on. knowledge of self, man. But I want to get into two specific posts. So the first one comes from March eighteenth, two thousand twenty, and it says, "Change the story you've written in your head about yourself." Speak on that, man. Story that I written by myself. Mm. Yeah. It says change that story. Yeah. Well, the story that I had was I had limiting beliefs. Now I'm limitless, bro. Uh, I like, like that. I really am. I've tapped into some that's like it's endless. I just have to be careful because you got to understand that the mind is a supercomputer. This body's this body that we all have is just very uh, enhanced technology. So you got to be careful. Don't push yourself too much. You are limitless, but there are parameters you have to stay in. You yeah. Know what I mean? yes, sir. All right. Then the next one is from October 28th, 2017. And I, I, I fuck with this one heavy. It says, <sighs> don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. Mm. Damn, Ooh. my boy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Speak on that one. Yes, sir. Because that's what we all do, man. <laughs> we all get mad at other people and down on ourselves because just another year or just another birthday. We don't even celebrate our birthdays. And I was like that for many years. But it's, what are you doing to change the narrative? What are you doing? Because ain't nobody else going to change. Nobody give a fuck. Don't nobody care about you, really. They do when they see how much you care about other people and how much you can, and, and the service you provide with a genuine heart and, and, and being authentic. But if you just whining and complaining and woe is me, then nobody cares. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah, what it is. So I want to get into something real quick. Um, so can you educate some of our listeners about this country? Some may have not heard of it before. Uruguay. Uruguay. Oh, get them right. Get them right. Up. Get them hey. right. Hey, Basho, what's up? That's that's my family, man. The the sun, mm-hmm. the sun with the with Celestia. You know what I mean? The blue. And <laughs> for people that don't know Uruguay people, they're very emotional, you know what I'm saying? Very just loud. They're like Spanish Jamaicans, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. Yeah. Big up, big up yeah. family. Yeah, drinking our mate, you know what I'm saying? Smoking <laughs> on cigars, man. I love I love my culture. I, lo- I love everything about it, Uruguay. If you don't know about it, you know what I'm saying? Look it up. Montevideo, shout out to all, to all my family, man. I mean, my dad grew up on the coast, you know what I mean? I visited Uruguay one time. We were supposed to go next year mm-hmm. in March, but because of all this pandemic stuff, maybe. It's still a maybe, but, yeah, man, Uruguay, Uruguay yeah, it's, it's the love. It's the love for, it's the love for love. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So now, man, we've reached that time. It's the favorite segment of our Jack of All Spades Nation. It's called Top 5 Dead or Alive. So, Marcelo, what are the top five things that a person needs to achieve a higher sense of self? I feel like breath work. you you got to learn how to breathe. People don't know how to breathe out there, man. Look up Wim Hof or Buteco Method. B-U-T-E. 
KYO, if I'm not mistaken. That's huge, man. It really is. And because breath work will, will, will help you combat any virus, any ailment, you know, raising the pH levels in the blood. You just mm. become unstoppable. Meditation is huge. Some All this stuff is simple, man. Exercise, proper diet, specifically electrical, like electric food. That's what Dr. Sebi talks about, mm -hmm. uh, or high-frequency food. You know, you want that living living enzymes. And oh, not to cut you off, when you talk about high-frequency food, you mean like non-alkaline type food? Like what's So what I mean by high-frequency food, so it's like this. If the food is living, like let's say there's a plant in here and it's, it's living, right? There's this machine that you can actually hook up to the plant and it'll start playing music. Mm -hmm. So that means it has a frequency. Everybody's playing music, you know what I mean? Because everybody's just vibrating at a, at, a, at a certain frequency. So if I were to take that same machine and put it to like some Oreo cookies, that shit ain't going to do nothing. If anything, it's going to scream like, ah, I need help. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to sing to me uh -huh. the way the plant was singing or mushrooms or whatever. So then th what I mean is if you cook the mushrooms, there's even, you'll kill the frequency. You'll kill the electricity inside the mushroom. So you want to be able to eat as much a of that electricity as you can. Mm -hmm. So kind of raw per se? Yeah, you could do raw, but that's why the thing is it's hard, man. It's hard when you do a raw vegan diet because I've done that. You you could become malnourished, you know what I mean? There's a lot there's a lot to that, you know what I mean? But that's why this I call this futuristic space food because this is biodegradable. Biodegradable means that bad. We're trying to we're Purium is going uh plastic free in 2021 because they really believe in ending human suffering. So that biodegradable bag literally means if you throw that in the grass or on the ground, it's gonna degrade, it's gonna just dissolve. You know what I mean? So all that that's in that container is living food. Because of the science behind it, that that is next level shit. So if you if you want to level up and you really are serious about it, like hit me up, hit me up, and let me know. Cause that right there is the truth, and and I'm, I'm about to share this with my brothers right now. They about to they about to taste something. <laughs> about to take a shot, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> now that you're talking about it, shout out the social so people that yeah. are listening can tap in with you. Cello Effects, C E L O A F F E C T, on all social media platforms, all social media platforms, also. The Holistic Justice League on Instagram, um, Facebook. And yeah, that's just what it is. TikTok, everything. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely check into the vocals, man. I, hey. I got I to gotta get better at that, man. My <laughs> thing is I do so much on my own that I'm always looking and willing to collab with people because I, I, I'm a powerhouse on my own, man. Like I really am. I'm a business owner. I, I edit. I film. I sing. I, I do everything, man. Everything. So when I meet like-minded minds and individuals. I mean, look at this place, man. Like, it just, it just, it just you know, it makes the, the, the thing happen faster when you have more right. people that have the same mission. No doubt. Yeah, right. yeah, for real. No doubt. Well, man, look, I already knew coming into this after we spoke, man, it was going to be more, the most inspirational episode to date, man, and I don't think you disappointed. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> when people listen to this, they probably going to hit us in the DMs like they doing, like, yo, we need to hear more about this guy. Because <laughs> the yeah. story was just so powerful, man, but... It's a summary, man, real talk. Yeah, well, like you said, the movie and the documentary and the book coming book. out soon, yeah. like, people can really get into the... Could go through the other stages of hell that you went through. Right. You know, That's there crazy. was a story that you didn't want to talk about, but I'll lot. leave it at that with the X and a, a knife and a, and a leg. But we ain't going to talk too much. <laughs> I was about to after, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real talk. I almost lost my leg because of this chick, bro. I almost <laughs> lost my leg. I <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Man ain't going to say too much, man. Yeah. But Jack of All Space Nation, it's, it's near that time, man. You heard the words of my boy Marcelo. Cello Effect on IG. Man, but y'all know where y'all can find us at, man. Anchor.fm for all the streaming platforms. But of course, you don't have to go to Anchor. You can go straight to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify for the audio individuals. Of course, YouTube. Shout out Jay Marlowe behind the scenes, man. Never forget Marlo. Marlo. Show. But as always, I am the beloved one. It's a YBB part of Africa, one time for Malawi. Malawi. Is yes, there one time for me? Banks for water. <laughs> one time for your boy. Right? <laughs> Fat boy yeah. tires, all that automotive needs, man. And yeah. then once, you know, last but not least, one time for the one time, my boy Marcelo Pena, man, yeah, like I family. Appreciate y'all, man. For real, we're gonna end it off with some Palo Santo. You know uh -huh. We came in here blessing this place. Now we are gonna leave blessing it. Sure. sure. And we about to get straight to the drink, man. So. Yeah. 
No. Hit me up. Let me know, man. Malik Taylor. If you don't know who that is, man, big up Fife Dog. You already know what it is, man. Try Call Quest, Linden Boulevard, Queens, New York, man. Mm. And like he once said, tell your mother, tell your father, send a telegram. And we out.